DRO that's arrived for the lathe. Got this for my birthday present. When it first arrived, there wasn't, they hadn't sent me the um, instructions. I had to print them out. But now it doesn't look too bad. This DRO is supposed to fit, well, it is for this particular lathe, so I'm just going to get on with fitting that this afternoon. I might see if I can just do a little. I was going to try a time lapse video, but actually, the new time lapse camera that I bought hasn't arrived yet. So I'll just sort of video a few bits of me putting this together. Kit, there's quite a lot of stuff and it looks a little bit daunting but honestly it's really not that bad so the first thing to locate is this sort of aluminium extrusion you get this aluminium bracket you basically in the instructions it shows you how to measure it has to be into the center of the, the cross slide but I think it's relative to to where the compound slide is but it tells you in the instructions that so you measure it off you pack it out with a couple of spacers I just used three one mil washers then you, uh, you can't see it here because I've, I've already put the magnetic reader in, but you, um, you basically drill and tap three holes, M4. I just switched cast iron, so it drills quite easily. Just went straight in with a three and a half mil drill. So you put that in, then you stick the, you stick the magnetic strip in, it's all cut to size for you. Stick that in. Then you slide in this stainless steel strip, which covers it all up. And then there's two little rubber, rubber things which you, you squeeze in now that was a little bit more awkward first of all only had one so you have to obviously cut it in half and you just stretch it out push it up push it into the, to the bottom there let it go trim the edges off and then with the other one do the same i probably should have done i should have shown you that but honestly it's dead easy and that holds it all in place and then you've got all these bits and you think oh god i don't know what to do with this but really it isn't that difficult so if you can see there, I'm just trying to look. There's this bracket here, which is the key bit. That's the key piece. Then there's like a spacer thing, and then the encoder, encoder reader on the top, or what's it called? It magnetic encoder head. So that just sits on the top. So that's just I've just left that loose at the moment. The the head. Oh, actually, no, sorry, it's this one. I should have I should have left loose. Doesn't really matter. Um, so what you do is again you measure. Across the cross slide you measure into the middle and you drill and tap or you, you offer this piece this bracket up with so you put it together like that to start off with that basically the encoder reader fits into that groove there so you you loosely put it together mark drill and tap m4 and, and that's it just sort of put it put it together now so there's uh, four little grub screws that came with the kit which are over here when you open the kit, you're thinking, what on earth are these for? But now it all becomes clear. So these go in here. Four of these. Put those in a sec. Then you screw this on. So I'm going to just loosely fit this. One screw in. It's supposed to be really quick for you. You can adjust it so that it's in the right place. Let me just tighten these up now a bit. So there it is, fitted. You can see the grub screws, that just lines up the angle bracket. Then there's the spacer thing, and then there's the magnetic reader on, on the top of that. And here, this is the aluminium extrusion, which you screw to the cross slide. Then you stick the magnetic tape thing on. Then you put the stainless steel strip on, two pieces of rubber. Put that on top, job done. I kind of feel as if it would be nice to have some sort of brush thing there just to stop dirt going down through that hole, but anyway. So now I've got to do the, the long one for the, for the other one, for the, the actual bed, for the saddle. 
this is going to be more awkward, not not because it's any different, but because I can't get round into it very easily and I'm not pulling the lathe out because it's a complete pain. So I'm just going to do it straight like this and we'll see how we go. <laughs> This one's a bit more difficult, actually. So I think that is correct. There's a plate, a spacer, piece that attaches to the saddle, and then there's this bit here, which wasn't 100% clear in the diagram, but I'm pretty sure that's how it goes. I'm just going to have to. Have a look and see. Also, there was no mention of the spacer. It just happened to show up in one of the videos. I'm pretty sure, sorry, one of the pictures. I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be there. Let's see if that is right. I think it is. The next thing I've got to do is I've got to get the aluminium piece extrusion on. Good thing with this is it's cast iron, so it drills quite easily. I'm just going to do this one. On. Right, the rail is all on. So it's all good. Right, I fit, fit, fitted the aluminium extrusion for the Z axis reader and I fitted it here in what I thought was the correct position. This is the, the flat piece of the lathe bed which takes the taper turning attachment and this is where I've put the the extrusion there and you can see I've fitted the actual reader head and it's all good it all slides along it all fits but I've discovered the problem which is very difficult to see but basically the cover won't fit I can't get the cover over the top of it because of the pieces here and, and basically it's too high now I'll say in my defense here if we look here step 39 the reading head should be sitting above the taper turning area right so because of the, the way that it's the lathe bed is fitted there's the perfect place for it to fit and it looked absolutely spot on but I mean you can guess that it's not right obviously I can't get the you can see I don't know if you can see the guard, won't, the guard won't fit, it's no good without the guard, so basically I've got to do it again. And I'll start again. So first thing I'm going to do is take, take the extrusion off. Oh, what a nuisance. Right, taking it off, I'm going to do it again. This time I'm going to put it, I'm going to put it about. So I've refitted the rail. It seems to fit quite well now. That's just about right. So now what I'm going to do is just clean it up a little bit and then I'm going to put the magnetic strip in. Now I had to, I had to just trim the the rail at that end just a little bit in order, to, in order to make it fit past the guards and it does say that you can trim this thing off thinks it can get the better of me that bit but it can't Stainless steel strip to go in, which will get out of the pack 
hit. That goes in there. That feeds in. Gonna have to trim that, of course. So, just there. I'll do this with the snips this time. Yes, I can. Right now, the other thing. The first thing is just cuts it off. Now, this one you have to sort of hold it and stretch it and it would be good to have an assistant but of course I haven't got one so this is going to be really difficult I'll have to just clamp it at that end that'll do well this probably will do so Clamped it at that end, and I can get to the other end and stretch it out and stick it in. Should push it in. Okay, that's it. Right, we'll put this, this bit back on and I'll get it lined up. Okay, so what it says to do in the book is you're supposed to put a shim in there now. Shim it out, which I might do this time. It says 0 0.25 to 0 0.5 millimetres, so I've got... Yeah. Three pieces of masking tape stuck together that measures 0 0.32 millimetres, so that is probably that. And we'll put that in there, like it says. I can imagine this completely not working. Lightly compress the thing. Tighten it up, and then remove the thingy. Okay, I'm going to actually do that with this one as well. Anyway, that seemed to work. So that seems to be about right. Okay, so I think that's the worst of it done. So now I've just, oh, I've got to put the guard on, haven't I? I think that's it mostly done. That's the guard fitted. Do you know what I think I'm going to do is I use a lot of flood coolant. So I'm going to, I'm going to put a little bead of silicon down the edge of there, down that guard, just to stop the coolant going down. Don't know whether that's necessary, it probably isn't, but that's what I'm going to do. But I'll do that when I'm all finished. And I've got to refit the flood cooling uh, tube because I had to move it. So I need to just drill a couple more holes and put that back somewhere. If it was in the way, there's already one hole there that might, oh no, it wouldn't do. Oh, it doesn't matter, I'll do that at the end. Drill then. So now I'm going to fit the actual DRO bit itself. Right, I've worked it out. Two brackets at the bottom, and then there's the post thing that goes through there, connected to the bracket. And on here, there's four grub screws, which are going to go through these through these two holes. One, two, three, four, which I think is to so you can mount it on something that's not square, and not flat. But it seems that two of the holes have been forgotten to be tapped. I'm just going to quickly do that now. M5. Oh, 
I've mounted it at the back. I've just put it, I've actually just attached it to the fiberglass cover at the back, which I think it'll be all right. I mean, it only needs to hold it. I would have liked to have, or preferred to have put it at the back there, up against the, the actual body, but I can't, I can't get round there to drill and I'm not moving the lathe, it's too difficult. So I think it looks pretty good up there anyway. So I've got to wire it up, but these cables need tying up securely. And I've also got to put the electricity in for the, for the DRO, but I think I can take it off this socket here. The light circuit, well it's not actually a light circuit, it's just a, it's just a plug really with a bulb on the end so I can tap into that. Okay, I'm calling it finished. I've put, I've attached up all the cables. You're supposed to put a loop uh, to stop any drips going into into the actual wiring. So I've put the I put the cable loops in as as you're supposed to. Oh, that one is supposed to be pointing downwards. I tried to make it a slopey slope down. Cabled that up all up there. I've just I will wire it up to the to the plug. But at the moment, I've just got it on this temporary thing, and it all seems to, well, stuff seems to be happening. So, it all looks good so far. I've just got to read the instructions of how you calibrate it or whatever's got to, got to happen with it now. Um, I seem to have got quite a lot of bits left over. Uh, but all in all, I think that's probably it. I didn't even break anything apart from those three little bits there, but there we go.